Hi everybody, I'm Judy and I'm addicted to puzzles. Today I'm going to go over six puzzles that I did this week. Um, they're all new to me brands. So they're brands I hadn't tried yet. Some of them are new brands on the market and some of them are, they've been around for a while. So the first puzzle I did was this Polar Express by Grateful House. I won this puzzle on a giveaway back in December but I was working on the Dowdle puzzle and I didn't have a chance to do it. Um, and I really wanted to do it. So that's where I kind of came up with the idea for doing brands that are new to me. Cause I have this one and then you'll see the rest in a few moments. All right. So this puzzle came with a Grateful House catalog, a nice thank you card with the puzzle on the back and the option to become a VIP, which is really cool a greeting card and a full size poster. See how vibrant the colors are? They're absolutely beautiful. All right, so I don't have this one together anymore. I put it together in a time lapse. You can see the time lapse on um, on my channel. I will put a link to the t all the time lapses I did this week in the description. This puzzle was it's beautiful. The pieces are, are thick. I don't know if you can see that, but the pieces are really thick. Um, the only, only thing it didn't, it wasn't like super tight fitting, like some puzzles. Um, but did that take away from doing the puzzle? Oh, absolutely not. The pieces are, like I said, they're thick, they're vibrant. I mean, these purple pieces are really cool would i buy more puzzles from grateful house absolutely there's one that i've seen on instagram called spectrum it's a gradient with it kind of reminds me of a photo mosaic it has um little pictures within i think there are little hexagons um it's really pretty so hopefully i'll get that one one day i'm kind of trying not to buy <laughs> any more puzzles my husband's getting kind of annoyed but I do have some more puzzles I will be doing another another puzzle haul pretty soon that was Grateful House beautiful puzzle I highly recommend and I highly recommend the next puzzle I did was this absolutely adorable puzzle from Ibu this one is called Kind Dragon and it was fun. Like my son even helped a little bit. So Eboo puzzles. I don't know why I hadn't done an Eboo puzzle in the past. Um, I've heard nothing but great things about them. I just haven't. There are some puzzle brands that I just don't. I don't know. I don't really buy. I guess and Eboo was one of them. I do have another Eboo puzzle sitting right over there that I just got from Galaxy Stores. That will probably be in my next puzzle haul video. Um, Galaxy Stores is closing. So I bought 14 puzzles from them. Oops. Um, anyway. Uh, so the pieces are a little bit glossy, um, which honestly I don't mind. It depends how like my lights are set up to where they're not above the puzzle. Now, if I was doing a super glossy puzzle with the lights on top, then it gets, it gets kind of, I, I guess the only word I can say is annoying because the lights glare so bad. But my setup, um, I don't mind if it glares because I don't have lights directly on top. Um, but these, I mean, it kind of looks like they have lacquer on top of them. They're actually, they're just, they're beautifully shiny. Which, like I said, depending on how your lights are, might not be a great thing. But for me, it wasn't a bad thing. But this puzzle was absolutely adorable. It has the dragon, he's holding some birds, and there's a little fawn, and a frog, and a turtle, and a castle, and butterflies. <laughs> it was just a fun puzzle. And this also has a poster, oh my goodness, a poster of the puzzle, and then it has um, some puzzles from Ibu. Definitely enjoyed this one. It is so cute. If I had a, if, if my son wasn't 13, I probably would have glued it and hang and hung it up in his room because it's super cute. 
The next puzzle I did is this one from Reverie. This is a newer puzzle company, I believe. I believe they're newer from Australia. And their puzzle themes are like puzzles and books. A lot of their themes are situated around books and stories. Um, and this one is called Floating Books. I was so impressed with the quality of this puzzle. I had heard nothing but great things with this puzzle on Instagram. And I actually have three more that I got in. It's, I don't even know what to say. It's a beautiful puzzle. This one also has a burlap bag with it, which I absolutely love. The fact that you can take, you know, the puzzle at the end and then put it in a bag. This one I still have together right here. And you can see the quality. I mean, it's not taped or anything. I actually am going to tape it and I'm going to hang it hopefully right behind me and then you can see it every time I do a video. Absolutely beautiful puzzle. There's no glare. It's um, a matte finish. It's just, I, this, out of these six puzzles, this was one of my favorites, if not the favorite. You can pick it up over and over again. I've moved it from place to place to place in my puzzle room. There's no glue on it. It's just, it's a beautiful puzzle. See, no glue. <laughs> I love it. Um, like I said, I have three more of these, so um, you'll be seeing more time lapses, and I'm sure I'll talk about these again in the future. The next one I did is a super fun, funky kind of puzzle. Um, this one's called Freaky Deaky, and it's from Le Puzz. Um, I saw this on a post on Instagram last year, and Black Friday, I bought um, this one, and I bought a whole bunch of little mini ones. Well, there's four of them. So here's one of the little mini ones. It's 81 pieces, so it's really just a cute little puzzle snack. Um, these will be fun. I'll be doing these pretty soon, I think. Probably just while I watch TV, though. I don't know if I'll actually time up, so I might. So Freaky Deaky. My dogs are howling. I don't know if you can hear them. They're basset hounds. I have two of them, Maggie and Eeyore. They're brother and sister. And I'm ignoring them right now, so they're howling. Oh, they're done. This one also comes with a poster. And it's lepuz.com. I love their design. I think it's really cool. And the box is lepuz. This top lid says, good luck. <laughs> Put on this puzzle. You kind of needed it. So this puzzle is 500 pieces. The pieces are really big, chunky pieces. Like if you see, they're just really big and chunky. The puzzle fits together. Absolutely perfect. This one took me four hours, so it was um, definitely more challenging than what you would think. And the pieces are, I love the thick and chunky pieces, and they fit together perfect. Again, this isn't glued or anything. Um, it's really nice. I'm looking forward to doing the little tiny little tiny ones I have because um, I know that all the pieces are going to be you know weird shaped like these like they're not um, your typical grid pattern they're just they're cool the hardest thing I mean besides the fact that there's a lot of solid colors and a lot of repeating patterns in this one is you have pieces that are flat so you don't know like I was, I was kind of trying to feel the flat part to see how flat it was, you know, to see if it was a frame. So this one feels like it could be a frame. And then you have, obviously this wouldn't have been a frame because it wasn't, you know, has that dip right there. Yeah, there was a lot of pieces like that that were flat. So you weren't sure if it was a frame. So I had uh, way more frame pieces out than, you know. Oh, actually with this one, I started in the middle. I didn't even do the frame first. You can see the time lapse on my on my channel and like I said I'll put all the time lapses here in the description so you can see all the time lapses if you like watching time lapses I've kind of made them a little longer instead of just when I was doing them before I would just take pictures so that my hands weren't in there 
now I've just started doing the video. I get a lot of comments on how I puzzle because I puzzle straight from the box. I started doing that when I was a kid because I didn't have, you know, if I was working on a, I don't know, a hundred piece puzzle or a 200 piece puzzle when I was like eight, I just puzzled out of the box because I didn't have a lot of space. So now I don't ever think in my entire life sorting a puzzle the way I've seen people sort, which is for me, I feel like it's tedious, but other people, they're like, that's my meditation time. And when I try to sort, I wind up just putting the puzzle together anyway. So if I'm, if I was going to sort that puzzle, I would already have half the puzzle put together before I even finish sorting because I can't just not puzzle. It doesn't make sense. It's kind of weird. So I just puzzle out of the box. I take like this one, I took all the yellow pieces out and then I put those together and I hold pieces in my hand a lot. So I guess my hand is kind of my sorting tray. And I think the reason why I do that, I know people put like, I get a lot of comments that they're like, I have to have all the pieces spread out so that you can see them. When I try to do that, I actually wind up putting most of the pieces back in the box because it, um, for me, it's a little too chaotic. So that's why I don't dump the pieces out. Now, if I'm speed puzzling, I will dump the pieces out and I'll flip them all up and I'll start putting it together as I'm flipping them. Um, mostly looking for the, you know, light colors. Uh, I've just never been a sorter and I don't think I will ever sort. I have tried it. I just, I, about halfway through, I'm like, I don't know where this piece goes. I don't know where this piece goes. And unless they're super distinct puzzles, sometimes it's hard to tell where, you know, what pile it should go in. So I just don't bother. I never have. And I never even knew sorting was a thing until I was on Facebook and Instagram and I see these fabulous piles of beautifully sorted pieces. And I'm like, that takes a lot of patience. And I have patience putting a puzzle together, but I don't think I have the patience for sorting. So when I puzzle out of the box, I just find the light colors. I look at the picture and be like, okay, I'm gonna start with the face instead of the border. The border was actually very hard on this puzzle. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. So this one I started with the face. So I took out all the yellow pieces, you know, and you could tell the nose and the, most of the eye, eyes. So I uh, did it that way. Um, the box I use most of the time, this is a very big box lid. It's from the, the 9,000 piece Robinsberger puzzle. Um, so this box lid has held thousands and thousands of pieces, like thousands of pieces, hundreds of thousands of pieces, actually, probably. Um, I do have two more 9,000 piece puzzles because this box lid is getting a little beat up. I have it taped. <laughs> so I need to do a 9,000 piece puzzle so I can get a new box lid. The bigger the lid, the better. I can't, you, 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 it's hard to rummage through a box lid when it's just a little, like a little tiny Buffalo games box. Um, I can't really rummage through a puzzle like that. So then I always use this for those types of puzzles. Um, I did have that one used on a different puzzle this week though. So I was using a different box lid that's quite a bit bigger. It's a 1500 piece Educa puzzle. Um, so I was using that lid for these puzzles. And I actually used this one for another puzzle. The bigger the box lid, the easier it is to do the rummage through the box method, I guess is what you can call it. Freaky Deaky by Lay Puzz. Very fun puzzle. I enjoyed it so much. And it was a, for a 500 piece puzzle, it was a great challenge. The floating books only took me a couple hours. I wasn't trying to rush through it or anything like that because I loved it. So that one took me a couple hours. So yeah, this one took me twice as long as the floating books. The next puzzle we have is um, Envelopes by Tanya Wicks. I was so impressed with this puzzle. It flowed together like, I don't know, it just, once I started it, it just flowed like magic. It does come with a poster and the colors in this are just so vibrant. And Tanya or Tanya, I don't know how to say it. She's from Australia. She does um, her own photography. So her puzzles that she has, they're her, her photography art. She has a great eye. I mean, I can't, 
I can't do photography this good. <laughs> I wish I could. Um, okay, so the quality of this puzzle, look at that. Absolutely amazing. Like you just pick it up, no big deal. But this puzzle did, it just flowed together like melted butter. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Um, just like I started with the orange and then I did the dark or I mean, I literally just went in a row all the way down and it was just beautiful. And then on the bottom side, I did the same thing. I started with, then I did the purple and then I just kind of flowed it together. It was um, super, it, it almost went a little too quick, but on some days, I knew this was probably going to go quick because of the distinct colors. I just didn't know it was going to go that fast. And I kind of wish I would have, I don't know, taking my time a little more. But, you know, some puzzles, they just go fast. It's beautiful. I have another one by Tanya. By, it's called Desert Bloom. It's going to be considerably harder than this one. So it's all, it's just, it's cactus flowers. And it, I know it's going to be a lot harder than this one. So... I know I say this one went too fast, but I know on the next puzzle I do, it's it's going to take a lot longer. So if you get a chance to do a, a, a Tanya Wicks puzzle, I highly recommend this puzzle as well. It's gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. So this next puzzle is um, Cloudberries. Now Cloudberries has been on the market for quite some time. I've had this puzzle for... Um, quite a while. I don't remember when I got it, but it's been a while. I don't know why I, ha I had never done it. I think I kind of felt that with a gradient, I think I felt the gradient was going to take a long time. And then um, now that I have a, a couple of gradients under my belt now, they go fast. This one is also a thousand piece puzzle. And I did this one in about three hours and 20 minutes. So just a little bit faster or a little bit slower than uh, the Tanya Wicks puzzle. The uh, Tanya Wicks puzzle has a lot of different shaped pieces and it, there's no glare or anything like that. The Cloudberries puzzle also has no glare, but a lot of the pieces actually are the same. So this one had, it had some false fits, not a ton, you know, you had to really pay attention to the, the color, you know, but I had, <laughs> okay. So I have a, I'll have a question to ask you in just a sec. I started with the pink in the corner and then I went, um you know to about the the brighter yellow or the brighter greenish yellow and i did all the purple i did all the blue i did all the white in about an hour i think it's about an hour and 40 minutes so three quarters of the puzzle in an hour and 40 minutes when i got to this side with the the greens and the yellows it took me an hour and a half just for this side so my question for you is when you're doing a gradient, is there um, a specific color that you kind of get stuck on? So when I did the Crypt Gradient puzzle a few weeks ago, I got stuck on the green also. And I started with the green and wound up doing the entire puzzle and, doing the, and coming back to the green last. So I don't know what it is with the green that... Um, that I have a, a problem with, I don't want to say a problem with, but, um, but greens are harder for me than any other color on a gradient, which is uh, kind of weird. Donna Louise from For the Love of Puzzles, she has the same problem with the paints. And I thought that was weird because I believe they're on the opposite side of the color wheel. So um, if you have a color that trips you up with a gradient or just in general, let me know in the comments because I always thought that was completely fascinating when uh, Donna Louise and I were chatting about that. So this puzzle, again, great quality. Um, there's not a lot of glare. It's very sturdy. Um, I would love to do more um, cloudberry puzzles. And they're pretty much sold everywhere. You can get them on Amazon. You can, there's a ton of puzzle stores that sell Cloudberry puzzles. So in the future, I know I'll be getting more Cloudberry puzzles. Um, there's another brand, Clementoni, that has a series called Color Room. 
um, I did get a few of those, and I'll show that in my um, in my uh, my next puzzle haul video. So I have a lot of gradients. I just have this um, joy for gradients now. Like Tanya Wicks, this gradient was that one was just fun. This one I was really expecting it to take longer. I just I just was, but it really like I started with the pinks and I just went, you know, and then. And then that was the green. So uh, really fun puzzles. Like, I don't know why I didn't do these brands prior. Um, Tanya Wicks is fairly new. I think she came out with puzzles last year, maybe the year before. So she hasn't been around a long time, you know, like Cloudberries. But I'm super impressed. I'm really impressed with her puzzles. Next weekend, I'm super excited. I'm going to be going to um, Colorado, the Denver area, in a little town called Centennial. Um, we're going to do a group build on the 60,000 piece puzzle. So super excited. If you're in the Denver area or you can get to Denver, um, I actually live in New Mexico, so it's going to be about a six hour drive. To build the 60,000 piece puzzle in a group, it's going to be really fun. So hopefully we can get it done in one day because that's the goal is to do it in one day. So I'll put in a link to the event in the description if you are in Denver and you um, and you want to go. Also, there's a, a YouTuber called Puzzle Me This. His name is John. He's working on the 42,000 piece. Um, oh, what's it called? Around the World? No, I can't remember the name of it. I have it. Um, we bought it at the same place because it was surprisingly very cheap. And when I see a huge puzzle that I've been wanting and I see it for really cheap, I think it was 287 for a 42,000 piece puzzle, um, I had to get it. I'm not set up in here for a, a 6,000 piece puzzle. I'm set up to a Robinsberger 5,000 piece puzzle. So I have to redo my setup before I can do something you know, much larger. Um, and I probably won't do that until I do uh, a couple of, but anyway, going back, he's working on it, but he mixed all the bags together. So that's what's making John extraordinary. He mixed all the pieces together. He built a table big enough to fit the full 42,000 piece puzzle. And I'm super impressed because that's like my, um, I don't know, goal, I guess, to be able to have a space to do a huge puzzle. And the one I will do for sure is the um, the 24,000 piece life puzzle. I will do that as a whole unit one day. I don't know if I'll do the 42,000 piece puzzle whole, but definitely the life puzzle because I have a second copy of it. Um, Donna Louise from For the Love of Puzzles is also working on the 42,000 piece puzzle, the same puzzle. Uh, she's doing it in sections though. So it's fun to be able to see John, he's doing monthly updates and then Donna Louise, who's working on it by section as I would do it that way. Cause that's all I'm set up for. Um, you know, I just have a bedroom. <laughs> I don't have a whole loft like John has, uh, but check out his progress. It's really cool. It, it's just cool. I don't, um, I know that there are people out there who mix the puzzles, but it's kind of rare that, you know, someone has that kind of humongous space. So I'm really impressed. Next weekend, Colorado, I will be doing a lot of videos. Um, one more thing. So with all these, you know, Donna Louise and John, they're doing these huge puzzles. Um, I have a few little things I want to do, but I think in about a month, maybe a month. I'm going to start one of my big puzzles. So my two choices that I'm set up for comfortably are either the 40,000 piece Mickey through the years, and I would be doing it by section or the 32,000 piece Keith Herring puzzle. Um, I've had that for a few years and, um, I got it from a friend actually, cause they didn't have space for it. So, um, let me know which one you would want to see me build in um i'd say another a month month and a half it's it's it'll probably be after my birthday in april mickey forty thousand piece or keith herring double retrospect thirty two thousand pieces keith herring forty thousand is mickey mouse so let me know which one you'd like to see me build and i'm probably gonna 
Um, I'm probably going to do both of them this year because Disney is turning 100 years old in October. So that means I definitely want to do Mickey this year. Um, so chances are they're both going to be done this year. Let me know which one you want me to do first and which one you'd like to see me do. Um, I've been thinking about doing um, some live video. Uh, I've had a, quite a few people say, you should get on Twitch and Puzzle. And I don't really know a lot about Twitch except for I've watched I Just Love Puzzles and um, a couple of other puzzlers on there. And it looks fun. I mean, it really does look fun. Or I've thought about going live on YouTube. Or I think there's an app that'll let you do both. I'm not really sure. I have to really play around with it. But if this is something you guys would actually watch, please let me know. And um, if I have enough people that are like, heck yeah, I'd watch, then I'll set it up and at least do like a, a trial run on a like a 500 piece puzzle and see if I can get it all set up good. Um, so I think that's it. Next week, I'm probably going to upload a video for um, A Killing Affair, the, um, the puzzles that I backed on Kickstarter. I have a set of three and they're murder mystery puzzles. Uh, someone had requested that I do a video. So this is probably what I'm going to work on next week. So this week I did a, I did a, um, a, a time lapse every day with these puzzles. And um, except for the gradient one will probably come out Sunday because if I'm going to upload this one on Saturday. I will have video from Colorado also. Um, someone requested that I review these puzzles from a killing affair. So that's what I'll do next week. All right. So um, happy puzzling and have a super day. And thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, like my video, and uh, just have an amazing day and happy puzzling. Bye guys.